Hello, good morning. How are you doing? Better than me, I hope. Um, I am still a hot mess. I'm sort of in my pajamas, sort of not. Um, I don't feel well, so I feel like being comfortable. <laughs> This is one of those things that is, um, do as I say, not as I did. It's easy to see things in retrospect. Um, but by then it's too late. It's really important. We have all these, um, fancy medical procedures that can be done now. All these pills that can be prescribed. I don't need to watch what I eat, watch my cholesterol. They can prescribe me a statin if it gets too high. Um, I don't need to take care of myself if I, um, I'm unflexible or uh, don't watch my diet and I get um, diabetes type 2. They can give me pills or insulin for that. There's a treatment for it. Um, if I get osteoporosis and I, I fall on break my hip. They can build me a new one. The age of modern medicine. A stitch in time saves nine. Not to quote, but very relatable to this one. Um, we are drawn to comfort and immediate gratification to avoid discomfort and pain. It's hard to motivate ourselves to do that, which is um, unpleasurable, um, unsatisfying, uh, discomfort in the immediate for a long-term gain, for long-term gratification, to do the right things right now. that aren't fun, that take work and effort and mild discomfort um, for the long-term payoff. But it's also been said that if you do what is easy now, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard now, your life will be easy. Uh, there was a podcast I was watching and they talked about the difference between cows and buffaloes when a storm is approaching. Um, the cows see the storm on the horizon and they turn away from it, trying to do what is easy to run away from dealing with it, to avoid it, to not address the situation at hand seeking comfort and ease and relief from distress, which is what um, humans, not through character defect, through um, physiology and biology, are inclined to do. You literally have to train yourself out of your own neurological presets through discipline and consistency to form habits that are healthy for you. The cow will run from the storm and the storm approaches and eventually the storm catches up with the cow and the cows just keep running through the storm, through the storm until they hit a fence and eventually the storm goes over them. But they spend so much time in the storm because they're trying to outrun a problem that's not outrunnable, like your overall health the health of your body. Yes, we have all these pills and these meds and these surgeries. How many pills, meds, and surgeries do you want to have in your life, really? 
um, and medicine only can do so much and it comes with side effects and risks and there will come a point when um, how yes we have longevity now but it's not about lifespan it's about health span how many years do you want to spend suffering versus living. Age is just a number only determined by the quality of your body, your physical health. At the end of your life, in those later years, you want to be here 20 extra years in um, agony, suffering, feeble, fragile, um, unable to care for yourself. Or do you want to be able to pick up your grandkids? Do you want to be able to bend over and tie your shoes? Do you want to be able to carry a bag of groceries upstairs? Do you want to be able to uh, stand in the shower and wash your own hair and bathe yourself and care for yourself? It's about uh, health span not lifespan and a lot of us don't even we like to block off and not even think of the fact that someday we will be old if we're lucky um we we dread conceptualizing that because we we dread conceptualizing our own mortality and uh the older that we are the closer that we are to um mortality but you will indeed continue to age and someday you will get old if you are lucky. I say if you are lucky because a lot of people don't last that long. Diseases, car accidents, horrible things come. And they don't get the privilege of living to a ripe old age. Should you get the privilege of living to a ripe old age, wouldn't you like to be living in that ripe old age? Or would you prefer to hang on for 20 more years, suffering and incapacitated. You have to sort of let this start to simmer and sink in and think about the things that you are doing to your health. Be like the buffalo. The buffalo takes the, um, it's a little hard now. Take a little bite out of the problem every day. Don't have to do anything massive, become a marathon runner. Um, no nutritionalist um, depth of adequate eating. Uh, become paleo or vegan or um, keto or whatever you think is the most apt. Be, you know, be, you, don't, you don't have to be perfect. It's not about perfection. Um, it's about uh, daily small bites of investment in your overall uh, physical health and maintenance. A little bit today, take a walk um, every day, move your body. You don't even, I, get, I can't, due to my physical conditions, I can't even pull off yoga anymore. Um, but I do try to uh, bend over and see if I can still touch the floor. Because um, when I'm older, I would like to maintain that much flexibility that I can still raise my legs and bend over. Because I'm thinking ahead, if I have to give up due to my physical health uh, conditions that I already have, um, a majority of capacity to uh, sustain any kind of exercise. And uh, you will have to uh, consult your doctor if you have conditions as to what your body can manage. Um, I'm thinking um, in the long run, what kind of activities would I like to still be able to pull off clipping my own toenails when I am um, 70, 80, 90. So I walk a lot, um, try and keep my joints supported, um, the tendons and ligaments and muscles around my joints supported, um, try and watch my posture, um, watch, use my phone up here so I'm not constantly head stooping, um, so I don't get that crook neck back weakness, um, I try to keep my core straight, I try to do things like bend over and, um, 
raise my legs high and bend over so I can clip my own toenails, reach over to pick the touch the floor so that I maintain strength and flexibility in my back so that I can bend over and pick things up for myself. Um, uh, lift things um, to maintain some kind of muscle mass. Um, little things every day. And I watch what I eat to the best of my ability because I have to compensate for um, pre-existing medical conditions and the lack of capacity to do um, extra exercise. I have to really make up for that in my dietary choices to reduce inflammation from my autoimmune disease and to make up for the fact that I can't do a lot on the exercise end of things anymore. Um, to prepare myself for, uh, hopefully, <laughs> quality of life in those last 10, 20 years, rather than um, incapacitated and just hanging out. Um, so, yeah, be like the buffalo. I'm going back to the buffalo. I know I've been a little it is what it is. Um, <laughs> the buffalo sees the storm coming, which is your exercise, um, eating nutritiously, doing those things day after day after day that you don't feel like doing, but they're good for you. Versus swinging by the McDonald's on the way home um, and sitting on your couch and watching Netflix until you fall asleep. Um, that are going to be um, more difficult a little more difficult today, um, but will pay off in the long run, big time. Your whole quality of life in the last years of your life, if you are blessed enough to live that long, will be determined on the little small choices you make every day that are difficult. Minorly difficult now, major payoff at the end. Um, the buffalo see the storm. They see <laughs> the um, implications down the road, the long-term gratification, the fact that if they do what is difficult now, their life will be easy. Easier because you're going to have problems either way. What kind of problems do you want? Massive problems at the end or minor insignificance, irritation, um, difficulties now, over time. <laughs> it's all hard. Pick your heart. Uh, be the buffalo. The buffalo see the storm coming and they run to the storm. They see the problem ahead and they run directly into the problem. They address the problem at, at the time, right in front of them. And because the storm is going this way, they're going this way. Um, they run right through the storm. They're not getting away from the storm. None, neither you nor I, the cow or the buffalo are getting rid or through the storm of um, health health span. It's not about lifespan. It's about health span and quality of life. Physical suffering is a special sort of suffering. Um, you get one body. How many cars you go through in a lifetime? Things break down if they're not uh, maintained. And you get just one. You, you can't go in and um, get new parts or trade it in for a better body. Once you develop a condition, you are dealing with that condition your entire life. And uh, you can work around and with conditions, but a free medical procedure comes with risk. Everyone adds up inflammation and trauma to the body. It all adds up.
Every pill has a side effect. And it all mounts together to give you um, a plus of bad lifestyle choices over a prolonged period of time, running away from the storm to ease and comfort versus facing the storm every day and just run right through it. A little brief, a little few minutes, just a few minutes every day. Um, take a quick walk around the block every day. Do some jumping jacks five minutes in the morning. Do some jumping jacks or some push-ups every day. Do a little yoga. Or if you're more inclined, more able, um, hit or weight training. Um, one of the largest um, predictors of long-term mortality rate overall is the amount of muscle mass you have on your body. So weight training is highly underrated in an image-driven culture where um, thin is in, um, that um, it's important to lift heavy things, <laughs> to, to squat and do those things if you are physically capable of doing so as much as you can. Um, and you can fit these sort of things into your general lifestyle A couple of times a week and, and eat enough protein to sustain the muscle you're building and make sure you allow yourself recovery because um, when we work out and muscle train we tear our body down um, and it is in the days to a full week depending on what you've done afterward um, where your muscle fibers are rebuilding they're sewing themselves back together um, weaving back together like a broken bone. When you're working out, you're tearing them down. Recovery is necessary. Um, recovery time between weight training is, is not optional. It's, it's necessary um, because otherwise you're just continually tearing the fabric and you're not allowing the fabric to rebuild and supplying yourself with enough um, healthful protein to uh, build because you can't build a house if you don't have any wood it sort of required you need to build add protein so you can build the muscle back and allow the rest time for that restitching to occur but weight training of some kind is important whatever is physically um within your medical requirements from your diet to your stress management because that can cause main major um, real, physical, um, and um, intellectual deficits, damage, and disease to your body over the long haul. Um, chronic stress, um, stress reduction, community as much as you can get it. Um, some of us, like me, I'm going to out myself, um, don't really have friends. It's my partner. And that's, that's about it. Um, I text people um, in the morning that I've picked up here and there in life that matter to me. But it's not like we spend time together. Um, it's my spouse. Well, it might as well be my spouse. <laughs> um, and... I don't really otherwise get much time with with friends, but um, having a community, even just the little bit of contact that I do with others is important. Um, it's oxytocin producing, and oxytocin has been proven to be a heart protective chemical, neurochemical. It helps uh, reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. So um, social network, human connection, service, serving others, giving kindness also produces oxytocin. So being less selfish and being more selfless um, on a regular basis is heart protective. Um, reducing healthy, unhealthy habits, moving every day, paying attention to what you eat, be the buffalo, do what now what is harder, not excruciatingly it's not really that hard it's common sense and and you don't have to like i said be a marathon runner um 
or um, go completely clean eating, complete, just make better choices. A little bite off every day. Discipline and consistency adds up over time. Social connection, stress reduction, watching what you're eating, getting enough fluid, liquid, that is water. We are 80% water. Um, most of us walk around dehydrated all the time. Um, learning a little bit enough about um, diet and nutrition that you can um, prevent diabetes type 2, that you can prevent high cholesterol. Some of these things are influenced by genetics, but there is epigenetics. Genetics is what you were born with, your risk of um, a bundled little tight grouping, a code that is closed in your genes that puts you at risk for things that run in your family. Alzheimer's, autoimmune disease, the list goes on. And epigenetics are the environmental influences of all type from the time you were born. Before you were born, your mommy's microbiome, the germs and stuff in her and her diet produce your microbiome, whether you were born C-section or um, natural birth, whether you were breastfed or um, formula fed. It's so many things, too many things for them to narrow down. So you just do the best you can and make as a healthy a lifestyle as you can come up with, given your uh, individual constraints. You don't have to be perfect, but the better you are, the more focused on the storm you are, the more you attempt to run into the storm and do what is mildly uncomfortable and inconvenient now on a regular basis, on a daily basis, um, is going to um, make you better down the line um, when you do get graced with the luxury of being old you will be vital you'll be able to enjoy your life live your life because we can only live our lives to the level which our body allows us to Yes, this body is a beautiful, wonderful thing, no matter what shape, color, condition your body comes in. It is the thing that allows us to experience life because our brain takes our senses internal, external, our five, um, six, if you want to call prior. Per, I can't think of what it's called, but our ability to tell where we are in space so we don't fall over like we did when we were infants. Um, that's a sense. And our um, insight, um, intuition, signals from our body, signals from the external and internal uh, that give us clues. Um, to gut instinct. Um, it is the thing that, that allows us to live. And you can only live as well as your body is well. So do the small thing every day. Small things every day to think about your health. Don't put your, your health last. Your health has to come first. It's easy when we're young not to think about it. At 20s and below, we don't think about it at all. We think about living our life, building up our life. Um, seeking, chasing, going after, doing. We, we are completely oblivious to how we are treating our body like a trash can. We feel immortal. We feel great. I mean, you could down a ton of booze and then go on a 10-mile bike ride the next day. Uh, it's like superhuman. And somewhere in your 30s, you um, eat a little bit too much candy and you get an upset tummy. Black coffee in the morning gives you heartburn. Start to get <laughs> regurgitation. Um, and it just starts to show. 
<laughs> it just starts to show somewhere around your mid thirties and you can't undo the damn. You become aware of yourself when things start to break and um, you can't undo the damage you've already done, unfortunately. Uh, but you can start from where you are to give you a better future by being the buffalo, address the storm daily with discipline and consistency to the best of your ability. And the more that you do it, the more normal it will be, the less painful, the less of an annoyance, less of, it'll become a habit to think about your body um, and care for your body and care for your health to the best of your capacities so that um, throughout your life, you will avoid as many um, diseases and conditions and um, physical limitations as possible. And in your later years, you can enjoy your golden years rather than suffer um, through them for an extra five or 10 years because we can extend lifespan with medicine um, and with surgery, but we can't extend health span. We can extend your suffering another five or 10 years if you completely neglect your body. Um, I have conditions already and they came overnight and I said, do as I say, not as I do. I, I didn't, I mean, I was somewhat conscious of my body, but not, not, not enough. Um, I certainly wasn't conscious of my stress. I wasn't conscious enough of my diet. I did damage through my eating disorder. My desire to be thin, uh, I, I wasn't thinking about my future. I didn't care if I had a future. I was so depressed. The, the dysfunction in my emotional calibration and my uh, priorities and my um, desire to fit in uh, my body dysmorphia, my, my self-hatred, um, my hatred of my body, my level of stress. Um, I have autoimmune disorders. In my mid-30s, like overnight, psh, 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 um, a litany of um, things happened that now I have to live with for the rest of my life. Don't, don't be like me. Um, take proper care of your physical self, your stress, your socialization, your physical movement, your diet, your consumption of water, um, pleasure, joy, fun, leisure, Sleep is highly, highly appropriate. I didn't mention it yet, so I have to stick that in there at the end. I made a few videos about sleep, but uh, uh, sleep. Quote of the day, this video is too long. It's like as long as my um, do I need therapy video, but it's really, 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 really critical. Once something breaks, it's broken forever. And trust me, as someone who now has to deal with chronic health conditions, it touches every area of my life. I can't trade it in and get a new body. I now have to live in the constraints of this broken system that causes me pain every day, all day long. Exhaustion every day, all day long. It's like a special kind of hell to be trapped in a broken body. Prevention. A dime of prevention is worth a thousand pounds of cure. Um, be the bull. Head for the storm with discipline and consistency. Um, and you'll learn more as you go and it will become a habit to care for yourself. The quote of the day. Time and health are two precious assets that we don't recognize and appreciate until they have been depleted or destroyed. I was young and dumb, as most of us are. 
I had my priorities backwards. I thought uh, I was healthy. I didn't have to think about my health. And um, I've already uh, lost some capacity and quality of life for the rest of my life. And it pains me and it fears me to think years down the line when I am all things go well. <laughs> 60, 70, 80. What kind of quality life will I have? I've made many a video about time. A few videos about health. But not really explaining to you why. You take your body for granted. You do what is easy and comfortable and pleasurable now because we are biologically wired, neurologically wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So we do what's easy now. And we don't think about our health until something breaks. And when it's broken, when you suffer a disease, an illness, then your whole life is constricted henceforth around your illness, every choice, everything you can or cannot do.